What's going on guys? Opulent Vision, Road to Sub 20, episode nine. We're making some good progress on this, but let's go ahead and jump into the Q&A here. And again, if you guys have any questions about personal life, about cubing, whatever it is, just go ahead and leave those questions. Uh, this time I'll be answering questions from two episodes ago. I'm actually a little bit behind, but we are slowly, slowly catching back up. So again, if you guys do have more questions, go ahead and leave them in the comment section. First question coming in from Enrico Samuel. He says, is sub 25 in a year good? I'm gonna be honest, that's about where I was sitting, which is absolutely fantastic to me. However, I've kind of seen a couple cubers in my comment section saying they've been cubing for like six or eight months and they're already sub 10. I don't know how that works or how much time they're putting into it. So I guess like it, it highly depends on how much you're actually cubing. Um, and again, I learned how to solve the cube like 12 or 13 years ago. So a lot of things have changed, a lot of better algorithms, quicker turning styles. I mean, I know JPerm has a ton of great videos showing like how to get quicker and all that. So I think there's a lot more resources than there used to be. So I guess to me, sub 25 in a year is excellent. Boat Xbox, he's one of the big supporters on this series. He asks, do you think GAN cubes are better than MoU cubes? He also says, by the way, nice profile picture. Uh, I guess, actually, yeah, you guys let me know um, in the comments. Do you guys like the new profile picture? I'm just kind of playing around with stuff um, to change it to be more artsy. Um, if you guys don't like it, I can always go back to the old one. But I guess answering your question about GAN cubes, I... I guess personally, I used to really like GAN cubes. Like I think the 357, uh, when that came out, that was my main for a long time. Um, and mainly because that was my only white plastic cube at the time. I think my like turning style and everything was way better. My pattern recognition, color recognition, whatever is way better on white plastic cubes, but they just don't make those anymore. Um, so, okay, well, I guess first part, we need to bring back white cubes. Somebody start a petition. Um, but secondly, do you think they're better than MoU? I'd say these days, no. Um, and I know there's a lot of GAN fans who are kind of subscribed to me. So I guess I want to address that. I think GANs are all right cubes. They don't match my turning style personally, but I can understand the draw to use them. One thing that I really don't like about GAN is how high they're priced. And I bet a lot of you would agree on that. Um, I mean, you could have two or three like really good flagship MoUs for the price of one GAN. Um, I don't know. I guess financially, it just doesn't make sense to buy a ton of GANs, I guess, even though I have quite a few of them. Um, I think MoU releases really, really good cubes, um, even though they're released like 10 cubes a month or whatever. I think the variety that they're giving out is enough to like match anybody's turning style. So I think if you have the, I, or I guess if you have the opportunity to try your friends like MoU cubes and just figure out which one works best for you, I think MoU is a way better deal. Um, but I guess, I don't know. I like MoU better, but GAN also has a lot more customization, um, like with the magnets, with the uh, core strength and all that. So I don't know. I think MoU's better for the price. I think GAN has a big draw because of how customizable they are. I don't know. I could go on for days and days about that question, but let's go ahead and get to the next one. Earman Halem, I think I said that right. He asks, have you ever been to Malaysia? If no, you really should. I personally have never been overseas. I've been out of the country a couple times going to uh, like Mexico. I'm in the United States, so that makes sense. But I've never been over to Malaysia. I think sometime in the next couple of years, I want to kind of go do a tour overseas and go to like Dubai, to China, Europe, Paris. I could potentially go to Malaysia. Um, I actually don't know too much about it. So I guess, are there a lot of like fun things to do, attractions in Malaysia, cool things to see? I don't know, but I definitely, definitely research it because I'd love to go visit a lot more countries overseas because I haven't been to any yet. Riley E. Swan asks, if you remember, how did you get your very first cube? My uncle gave me mine. That's really cool. Um, my first cube, I had like one of the OG Rubik's brands, like the ones you just, they just don't turn. Um, I remember I started with like a keychain cube. I won it in some kind of raffle at school, maybe when I was like five or six years old. That one, I peeled the stickers off. Um, 
I did not learn how to solve on that cube. A couple years later, I got a like an OG Rubik's brand, um, not the speed cube version, um, like the really bad turning versions. I remember I got one of those for Christmas from my grandfather, maybe two or three years later, and that's the one I learned how to solve on. So that is, I guess, the story behind my first cube. Um, and then that Rubik's brand, I ended up getting, I think, sub 30 on it before I upgraded to a speed cube, um, which that's got to be a record, like the quickest time ever solved on like a Rubik's brand. Um, probably isn't, but I think that it is. So that's pretty cool to me. So that's that. And then Greg DeCuber asks, what is your favorite event in cubing competitions? That is a loaded question. I have a lot of fun with all the events, but I think my favorite is three by three, just because that's the one I practice the most. Um, but I do have a lot of fun with bigger cubes, like six by six and seven by seven. Also, not a lot of people solve those or practice on those. So I think it's easier to get like a higher position um, in the rankings by solving those. But I think bigger cubes are one of my favorites if we're not like counting three by three. I know everyone likes three by three, but that's just me. Uh, Happy Gaming asks, how many PLLs and OLLs do you know? So if you guys don't know, I'm slowly learning PLL. Um, I've got like four or five left. I've got two of the G perms. I think there's like two ones that look like a Y. Um, I have those and then like one other random one. So I know a lot of them and then OLL, I still do two look. So not as many as I'd like to admit. So for that question, um, I'm sorry to answer it, but I probably know like combined like maybe two thirds of everything. So we'll see. And if you guys see me solving this four by four here, I wanted to do that as the challenge of the week. I don't practice four by four. So this was just like a beginner's method solve. Um, I used to be sub 130 and I was working on it, but I just can't even get close to that. So I got just under two minutes on the solve, which is pretty cool to me. But last question from Abram7824. He says, do you like the Xenoblade Chronicles? And if so, which is your favorite in the trilogy? So personally, I don't have a Nintendo Switch to play those on. I'm kind of holding out to get like the replacement to the Switch, whatever, or whenever that comes out. So I think that'll be fun. And eventually I'll play Xenoblade Chronicles. They always look really cool to me. Um, maybe if they'll come out with like a fourth one, who knows? Um, but I will eventually play those. So I'm just finishing up the 4x4 solve here. And again, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments. Um, and with that being said, I appreciate you guys for watching. Comment Dolphin if you made it this far in the video so I know you made it all the way through. That being said, we'll see you in the next one. Peace.